Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. At this point you can go ahead and pause the video and then try the problem yourself first. Okay, let's get started. Two squares and a circle are inscribed in a semicircle with radius 1 as shown above. Find the radius of the circle, which is shaded. Okay, so we know that the radius of the semicircle is 1, so let's go ahead and make some connections here i'm gonna go ahead and connect the center to one of the vertices of the bigger square and then it's also important to make a connection between the centers so we can use the fact that that segment is going to pass through the point of tangency like this okay not a very straight line, but I think it'll do. All right. So let's suppose the radius of the smaller circle or the just the circle is R. And what else do we know? Okay. We do need some lengths here. So we know that the radius is 1. In a previous video, we had calculated using the Pythagorean theorem. We had calculated the lengths of the larger square, right? The side length for the larger square. No. Let's go ahead and revisit that by calling this length x and this one 2x. And by using the Pythagorean theorem, we're actually finding that x is equal to root 5 over 5. So that the side length for the square is going to be 2 root 5 over 5. Okay? Those are the lengths. Okay. Now, how does that help us? Well, we're going to need to find, we're going to need to find the radius, right? So what else do we know? Let's take a look. Okay. Here I can make a connection like this and like that. These are also radii. So we get a little square here, right? These are R, which means that the hypotenuse is going to be R root 2. Great. Let's make that connection again. Okay. So that's going to be R and that's going to be R again. Okay. And this will be R root 2. Okay, now, here's what we need to do now. We got to find the radius, right? But here's, here's the problem. We don't know the side length for the smaller square, right? Do we know what it is? We don't. So that's what we got to find first. So how do we find that? Well, if you call this side length x in this case, right? So if you call that length x, then you can just go ahead and proceed to find the value of x. Uh, we got to use the Pythagorean theorem here, right? But how do we use that? Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now, we've got to make another important connection here. As you know, connections are very important, right? If you have connections, then you can achieve a lot, All right? So, this is obviously x, and the height of this right triangle is x. Let me go ahead and shade that triangle so you know what I'm talking about, okay? I'm talking about this right triangle here. And in this right triangle, the hypotenuse is going to be this length, which it happens to be 1, right? Because that's the radius for the semicircle. And I know the legs. The legs are x and root 5 over 5 plus x. So I can just go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem in that triangle. Let's go ahead and do that. Root 5 over 5 plus x quantity squared plus x squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, which is 1 squared. So let's go ahead and expand that. And from here, we're going to find the value of x. And then by using the value of x, we're going to find r. Okay? I'm going to go back to the figure. So let's go ahead and square this. Uh, it's a plus b squared. So the first one is going to be 1 over 5, right? Plus 2 root 5 over 5x plus x squared plus another x squared. And the whole thing is equal to 1. If you rearrange the terms to x squared, plus 2 root 5 over 5x, 1 fifth minus 1 is going to be negative 4 fifths. Okay? Now, we can go ahead and divide everything by 2 here to make it easier. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Pythagorean, I mean, what's it called? The quadratic formula to solve it. Yeah, we use the Pythagorean theorem already. It's just uh, that we need to use the quadratic formula now. Okay? So let's go ahead and set it up. And... In this case, you will you see from Vieta that one of the solutions is negative, but
but I'm not interested in the negative solution. So I'm going to be looking for the positive one, negative b plus minus, but I'm just going to write the plus, square root of b squared, which is one fifth, minus 4ac, and that's going to be 4 times 2 fifths, because c is negative, divided by 2a, which is 2. Okay, let's simplify this a little bit more. It's going to be negative root 5 over 5 plus the square root of, okay, this is 1 fifth plus 8 fifths, which is 9 fifths. And as you know, we can simplify that. I can just go ahead and write it as 3 over root 5, which I can write as 3 root 5 over 5. I hope you don't mind that. Now, they have a common denominator, so I can go ahead and subtract them. That's going to give me 2 root 5 over 5 divided by 2, which the 2 cancels out, and I end up with root 5 over 5 for the value of x. Okay, let's go back to our figure. So x is equal to root 5 over 5. What you're going to notice here is that x is actually equal to this. So this is kind of like a midpoint. Now, why is that happening? This is also a midpoint. Well, from symmetry, if you think about it, uh, this actually needs to be a midpoint. Okay? If you just think about the symmetry of the circle. Okay. So we got the x value. Now, how do we find, how do we find the, the r value from here? Well, it's kind of simple. Since you know x, this whole thing is x, which is root 5 over 5, right? This is also x, which is root 5 over 5. So you're, you're looking at a isosceles right triangle, right? Okay, I don't think I need that. Okay. okay. All right, here we go. So... We know the legs of an isosceles right triangle, so the hypotenuse would just be root 2 times that. So this is what I'm talking about. If you have an isosceles right triangle whose legs are x, then the hypotenuse would be x times root 2. In this case, we're looking at root 5 over 5 times root 2, which is root 10 over 5 for the hypotenuse. So this length is root 10 over 5, and this length is r root 2. And as you know, this length is r. But what's interesting is that the whole thing is the radius of the semicircle, which is 1. So let's go ahead and write down an equation that puts this all together. I'm going to start with root 10 over 5, which is that hypotenuse that we just found, plus r root 2. Remember, that's the diagonal of the square, plus the r, and that should all equal to 1. So this is what I'm talking about. This is root 10 over 5, this length, and then plus r root 2 plus r, and the whole thing is 1. Okay? So all I have to do is then just solve for r. The rest is easy, but let's just go ahead and finish it up. So I can just go ahead and... Okay, let me not do two things at a time. So let me go ahead and factor out the r here. That's going to give me root 2 plus 1. And then I'm going to go ahead and subtract root 10 over 5 from 1. So it's going to look like this. And then I'm just going to make a common denominator on the right-hand side. That's going to give me 5 minus root 10 over 5. Then I'm just going to go ahead and divide both sides by root 2 plus 1. That means it's going to be multiplied by 5 at the bottom. And the next step is just rationalizing the denominator. Okay? So, so let's go ahead and do that right now. Multiply by root 2 minus 1 over root 2 minus 1. Okay? And then from here, we're going to get something interesting. Let's go ahead and simplify all the way to the end. Divided by, okay, 5 times. Now, root 2 plus 1 times root 2 minus 1 is just going to give me, from difference of two squares, root 2, awesome, root 2 squared minus 1 squared, and that quantity multiplied by 5. So now I can just go ahead and distribute the top. It gives me 5 root 2 minus 5 minus root 20 plus root 10 all over 5 times. Okay, this is going to be 2 minus 1, which is 1. So I'm just going to get 5 from there. Okay, we can simplify this a little bit more. Let me write down root 10 first. Now, root 20, since 20 can be written as 4 times 5, 
I can just go ahead and factor it like this and write it as 2 root 5. So I'm going to do that next, 2 root 5 for this, and then plus 5 root 2, and finally minus 5, and all of that is divided by 5. So that's going to be the radius of our shaded circle. That's it. Thank you for watching. Please comment, subscribe, and like the video. If you have any ideas, please let me know. Any comments, let me know. See you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.